Hi, I'm Marilyn San Clemente of Stamp with Marilyn, and welcome to my Creative Playgrounds. Tonight, I'm going to show you how to use up all those pesky scraps that we all have laying around. And I've got a few ideas for you, and uh, let's get started. I'll set up my camera. So welcome. Um, tonight, I don't know about you, but for example, this is the, um, I'm trying to remember the name of this paper. It's a teacup paper. It's Tea Boutique. And this was one of my favorite papers when it came out last year as part of the new annual catalog. And look at all these scraps that I have. So I was going to show you some ideas today for using up some of those scraps because you can do some really, really cool backgrounds with those. And what I have found is match them up. So for example, this purple goes really well with these teapots. You know, match them up by design and what goes together. And um, that's the way to kind of get started. So let me show you some ideas. And another one that I have, this was my second favorite one from last year, was the butterflies. And I've got tons of scraps of that too. Oops. I have lots of scraps. And I actually didn't go through these today, but um, okay, yeah, I do have a lot of scraps there. So, as you can see. So there's I'm going to show you, get you some really good ideas, and we'll try a few things out. So one idea is to match up pieces that kind of go together, and for this type of a card, what I do is I cut this layer. So I've got my card base, which is a regular five and a half by four and a quarter, and then I cut the next layer which would be five and a quarter by four. And then I fit the pieces, I try and fit the pieces in to go with that. Um, here's an example of one that I did last night, and this one's a little bit different. I found a large triangle that I had that was left over from something. Um, I took a strip of the gold and put that down the middle, and then I matched all these little pieces. And then this is that same beautiful, beautiful paper, the Artistic Impressions paper. And I used a piece of the pale papaya, and I took pieces and just lined them up along here. So what I have found when I'm doing something like that, this is another one. This is really cool. I love that. This would take a little bit of planning to do. <laughs> um, this isn't one that you can just kind of sit down and do, but this one is it's very pretty. Um, this is one that I used for one of my downline meetings, and I just took a strip here, I took a small strip here, and then a longer strip down there. Um, this was one that I did for my stamp club, and this one I based it on this, on this um, piece of Starry Sky cardstock. And this is one that I did last week with my stamp club. And this is just three strips. So you could take three strips of designer paper that match or don't match and run them together and to go across. So what I have found is the key to this whole thing is to figure out what size you want your layer to be. So for example, with this one, I had a piece that is five and a quarter by four inches. And that takes up the whole front of the card. And same thing with this one. I did that with the pale papaya. But I've got some more scraps here of this beautiful paper, Artistic Impressions. And this paper retired last year, but I have tons and tons of scraps. So I have a piece of white card stock that I'm going to fold. And that will be my card base. And this is just a regular five and a half by four and a quarter. And then what I did was I cut this and I left a half an inch margin on each side. So I took the five and a half and cut it down by one inch. So that's four and a half. 
and then the four and a quarter and cut it down by one inch so that's three and a quarter so now the way I put this card together I'm going to do this the same way but just a smaller version of it so I have a triangle and I'm going to put this on here now I did cut the triangle this morning to fit the triangle was larger and I did cut it to fit this smaller piece and then I'm going to cut this I'll show you and then I'm going to lay these down so I did what I did was I did let's see yeah I probably want to go like that like this and like I said you can get so much out of these pieces okay so let's do this and then let's fit the screen one in down here okay so the first thing I'm going to do is put on the pieces that um, this triangle I'm going to use this triangle as kind of my starting off point hey Steph I know this was one of my favorite papers last year there's so many paper there's so many gorgeous papers <laughs> So, okay, so I'm going to line this up, and as I mentioned, the key to doing this, um, this process is to figure out what size you want this piece to be. So I was leaving a half inch margin. So this is three and a quarter by four and a half. So it's, a, it's one inch smaller than the card base. So I'm going to start with this piece, which I did trim down. Um, and then next I'm going to put this piece on and I'm going to put this on very loosely and I am going to have it overlap so it was really interesting because someone asked me last Thursday night I did my last virtual online class and someone said what do I do with all the scraps I just have so many scraps and then yesterday in church one of the ladies came up to me and said you know I have all these scraps and I don't know what to do with them and I said well I was planning on doing a Facebook live with that tomorrow night okay so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to trim this end off right now so I'm going to trim it so it's the same length and then we will figure out in a minute we will trim it down a little bit more so we've got that border there okay so these are scraps more scraps or smaller scraps okay and now I want to I'm gonna put this piece on like this and um, she sent me a picture so that teacup card that I used to advertise for tonight was actually a card that she made and she said I kind of figured it out and it was fun to use up some of my scraps and I said yep it can be so there's so many different things that you can do and I'll show you some more ideas as we go oops and I probably didn't I need to move this over a little bit more there we go yeah that works I know pretty paper what's keep what keeps us buying right okay and this one I'm going to move over so now what I'm going to do oops I'm stuck to my piece there okay so I'm going to trim off these pieces you're sticking to my scissors I don't know if you can see that oh shoot you can't okay there we go okay oops put those over there okay so now I have this piece but I want to trim off these edges so that I have that margin there to show the pink. And this is Melon Mambo. Oh man, my hand's shaky tonight. Okay, 
So I'm going to trim that. I'm going to trim along the edge here. There we go. And that wasn't too straight, but I can fix that, I think. Okay, there we go. stuck to my scissors there. Okay, and then this one, oops, I glued this one down too. I'm going to pull that off a little bit and do it this way. Okay, there we go. That's easier. And I'm sure straighter. There we go. Okay, so that is how I did this piece. So I started with this large triangle here, and and then I used this strip in the middle, and then I filled in with three other pieces that I had there. So now what I would do is go back in and use a little bit of my glue and just tape those ends down. So I'm just going to get under there. There we go. Oops. May have to hold it down for a minute. Okay, there we go. Good. Okay, so let's put this on our card base. So what would be fun to do also, oops, and I didn't trim this one. Okay, I missed one. And I didn't glue that end down either. Okay. There we go. Okay. So, one thing that you could do is you could um, emboss the card base to give it a little bit of depth. You could put another color on it. Um, we could do another layer of white, for example. So we could do something like this, just to make it stand out a little bit. When I was looking through ideas, I actually saw this, and it was really pretty. So, do that. I'm going to trim here. Move my scoring blade. Okay. okay. So you can just keep layering it. And then I think I have a piece of, I hope I do, a piece of melon mambo down here. Okay, so now I'm just going to put this on here like this. So you can just kind of build up the layers and use that to enhance your piece. Okay. Trim again. Oops. My ink pads are in the way. Okay, there we go. So, I really like the way that looks. That looks really nice. Or you can do it like this. You can do it, you could do it either way. But I really like that because that just brings out and it enhances this center point and makes that a real focal point of the card. There we go. And with these two cards, I just used some pieces that I had pre-stamped. 
So what I like to do when I have a set is I like to stamp, just stamp a whole bunch of images in different colors that go with the set. And then I put them in a little Ziploc bag and I save them for occasions like this where I might want to use them. And I haven't had this set out in a while, so let's do this. Actually, I'm not sure that I want to. This is that whole big, I don't want to do that. That's too big. Okay. Let's stamp a message. Let's do thanks. There we go. You're going to see I'm going to be using lots of retired papers tonight because um, the whole idea of this um, demonstration tonight is to show you how to use scraps of paper. And these are all the scraps and things that I had left from this paper. So I'm going to take this, oops, okay, and I love that, thanks. And let's put one of the little, we'll put a little um, flower on it. Okay, so as I mentioned before, the key is to decide what size do you want your focal point. So for this one, I wanted that wider margin. So I cut this down to four and a half by three and one quarter, which is a one inch margin um, from the other, um, from the regular card itself. And then I layered it onto some Melon Mambo and some other layers of white. So here's three of these cards that I did. Let's give you an idea. And this one I used a piece of the pale papaya and then I just used strips of the different paper and um, put them together. Okay, so there's that. This is a one of the Butterfly Kisses cards. I love this card. And so this is just a regular piece of cardstock, five and a half by four and a quarter. And I have cut this to four inches by five and a quarter. It has been embossed. And I can't remember the name of that embossing folder. I actually haven't used it in a while. So I want to have a little bit of margin around that. So I have this piece of Starry Sky, which goes with this paper. And let's see, I think that that one is, yeah, it is the same. It is, um, uh, let's see, four and three quarters by three and a half. So it's got a three quarters of an inch margin. And I've got these pieces of designer paper that have been cut to fit on the piece. So the key to this technique is to figure out what you want your center focal point to be that all your designer paper is going to go on to. So I'm going to put this here. I'll move this here. So I've got a little bit fo smaller focal point on this. And And I will do this. And we'll put this one on. Okay. And we'll add this to the middle of the card. Whoops.
Okay. A whole bunch of the butterflies. So let me get a couple of little butterflies. If I have, do I have little ones in here? I was hoping I did. Yes, I do. Oops. Okay. So here's a pretty, oops, starry sky body. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit of adhesive right in the center here. And that's going to go like that. And then I'm going to put a little bit of adhesive right there on that one. So what was really cool about this set, this one was called Butterfly Kisses, and it came out last summer. I hope it carries forward, because it is a really neat set. And there's so much you can do with it. Um, but it has all these different wings. There's like tons and tons of different wings and patterns. And then there's two different sizes of bodies. Um, there's a small body and a larger body. And you can just make butterflies of, you can just make so many different combinations of butterflies that are really, really pretty. That's kind of lost on there. Let's put that. Let's put it down here. It doesn't get as lost. This blue, the blue on the blue is too much for that card. So let's do that. Okay. And this is one that I made last summer. And then I used the little dots to do the eyes. Um, those are really cool. I like those. So, okay. Um, this is another butterfly card. And what I did was I just took some scraps. I took a good size scrap that fit across here. Um, and then I took a scrap that ran all the way down and then this narrow piece of orange and did the same thing. And then I just cut a big white circle and then cut out a couple butterflies and, and put them on. So that's another example of a way that you can do that. Okay, so I had this collection of teacup paper, which I love. This was called Tea Boutique. And it had all these gorgeous colors in it with the new in colors. And these are just all the scraps that I had. So I pulled out a few scraps. And what I thought I would do is I'm going to start with um, cardstock of Sweet Sorbet, which is the reddish one. And I have just a piece of white. And what I was going to do is cut this down. Okay, so if we have five and a half, so let's do four, four and three quarters. And we'll cut three quarters of an inch off this way, so it'd be four and a quarter, so that's three and a half. And that will be our centerpiece. Save those. Those are perfect for message size things. And there we go. So that will look like this. So now I took all these pieces because I'm working with the sweet sorbet. I took the scraps that have the sweet sorbet in them. So we've got this pretty flower. We've got this. We've got this solid piece. Um, and we've got this piece. So were there three designs? Four designs, because there's this solid piece, too. So there's four different designs. Okay, so what I'm going to do is we want to fill this up. So this is four and three quarters by um, three and a half. So we want to select pieces. Let's go across. Oh, this one might be. Oh, that goes the wrong way. Oh, this one goes the wrong way, too. Okay, so let's do it this way. Let's fold it this way. So let's cut that. So this is four and three quarters. So I'm just going to mark this here, and we'll cut that there. And I love this red one. Okay, so let's cut that and make that narrower. So I have my little mark there. And I want to cut that down to one inch. Put this, this would go here. 
And then let's do this. And then actually those two are too similar. Um, so what we might want to do, oh, that's this, that's more of that same one. Okay. That might not be good. Okay, let's do, that's yellow. What's the back side of that? That's, there we go. That might be better to do. Because I think with the red and this red, and then this red background, that's just going to be too much. So let's take this red paper here and let's do this. Let's use the teacup side. Oops. And actually, I have to go this way. We're going to do that. Because our card's going this way. Okay, so let me cut this. So let's do... So basically, it's like a puzzle. You just have to figure out what pieces, how you want them to be, and then where to cut your scraps. Okay, get that out of the way. So if you like doing puzzles, you probably would like this technique. Oops. So this is going to go here. And then this one, so this one we need to cut twice because we're going to want the same width. So we're going to cut that there. And we're also going to cut this here. Okay. Oops. And where did I mark that? Oh yeah, right above that. Right above the pink teacup. Okay. Nope, not quite enough. Okay, let's put these two pieces on. I'm going to put this on. I love this one, that pattern. Oops, there we go. go. And we'll put some tape on that. Okay, so there is our teacup one. And let's do, look at all this paper I still have left. I could probably do, make five of these just by cutting these different pieces up. And let's, let's see, I put my teacup stuff over here. Here we go. So let's take this. Um, got some flowers here. Okay, I have a piece of vellum here. I'm going to put this on the vellum so that you can see the flowers a little bit better. So I'm going to attach that to the vellum. Okay, and then, okay, so here's one. I tried to cut a bunch of different colors.
And now, let's see, I have, let's get together soon. I could put that down here. Or I've got a thank you. Let's do the let's get together soon. I'm going to put that on the front of the teacup. And let's put a small flower on that one. Okay, let's put that on there. Very cute. I like that. So now what I would do is put a piece of white on the inside, and then you can put some more flowers. You can put another piece here. And I just realized I did that the wrong way, going sideways. Okay, well, that's going to go up. <laughs> or I'll do it this way. It will go up the side. How's that? There are just so many different things that you can do, scraps of paper. So, um, like I said, the key is to figure out what you want your focal point to be, and then go from there. So, okay, so there's one, there's another one, and as I said before, this is an example of one that I found that I received in a swap one time. So, so this one with the focal point, I made this focal point um, a half an inch smaller. And this one is three quarters of an inch. And then this one is an inch smaller. So to start. So these are my ideas for using up scraps. And thank you for stopping by tonight. If you are in the US and would like to place an order, my host code for March is S-J-Y-S-U-U-H-C. And use the host code, and I will send you a gift of a set of embellishments for using the host code. If your order is over 150 then keep your own host benefits. But I do like to share host benefits with my customers. And then also, if you're not on my mailing list, go out to stampwithmarilyn.com and sign up for my mailing list. I send out a newsletter each week with lots of different ideas and things. And then I do offer a virtual stamp stamping class via Zoom um, twice a month. And my next one is not this Thursday, but next Thursday. So that is, let's see, so what date is that? That's got to be the 16th. Oh, yes, it's the day before St. Patrick's Day, so it's the 16th. So, okay. Thanks for stopping by and checking my cards out. Take care.